Europa Universalis 5 is now out, but unlike previous titles in the series, it's not supported for macOS, so we had to find alternative solutions to play it on our Macs. After extensive research and testing, I arrived at four workarounds that get the job done, and now I'm going to tell you about them. If at any point you find yourself overwhelmed with all the information, there is a link to our site in the description where you will find a very structured article on how to play the game. Two of the ways to play Europa Universalis 5 are cloud gaming services, and the other two let you download it and run it locally so there's something for everyone. But before you choose which one you want, you'll have to buy the game. If you want to get it at a significantly reduced price, check the description where you'll find links to the best discount deals for Europa Universalis 5 available at the moment. Now, let's get to the ways to play it. The first method you can use is Boosteroid, the cheapest cloud gaming service that's actually any good. The main draw of cloud gaming is that your machine doesn't matter so long as you can supply it with around 40 megabits of stable internet. And if you've got a faster connection, you can crank up everything to max even in 4K, and you should be more than fine. Europa Universalis 5 is one game where this advantage of cloud services is on full display. This game is surprisingly heavy for a turn-based strategy where most of what you see is maps and menus. For some reason, it requires a minimum of 6 gigs of VRAM and 16 gigs of memory, so you do actually need a decently powerful machine to get anything close to a playable performance. But with cloud gaming, you don't need to worry about your hardware specs, because you are technically streaming the game from a powerful remote gaming rig. When testing Europa Universalis 5 with Boosteroid, I played at 4K with high graphics and didn't notice any performance hiccups. The only limiting factor here is the internet but my 100 megabits per second wired connection gave me near native results. All you have to do to start gaming is follow the link in the description, register for the service and buy a subscription. Then just search for the game and click play. It's all pretty easy, but we have a how-to tutorial if you need it and an overview of the service if you want something more in depth to make up your mind. The next solution is GeForce Now, and it is the largest and most popular cloud gaming service out there. Its pricing is steeper than Boosteroid, but this is somewhat offset by its larger gaming library. Ultimately, the choice between the two depends on personal preference, but I still prefer Boosteroid simply because it gives pretty much the same performance, but at a considerably better price. But if you want the best of the best with all the bells and whistles, go with GeForce Now. Like with Boosteroid, all you need is stable internet with around 40 megabits per second, and you can play games with 1080p and 60 frames per second without any noteworthy lag. And if you've got a faster internet, say around 50 megabits per second, you can stream with 4K and 120 FPS. Using GFN is similarly simple. Just go to the respective link below, click Join Now, pick a preferred plan and register. Then download the service's macOS app launch it and look for Europa Universalis 5. Then click play, and after logging into Steam, you can start playing. Crossover is the go-to method in 2025 if you want to use your Mac's hardware. It will give you the ability to play anywhere you want without internet limitations, and scales better with newer Macs. But you're not going to get anywhere near the graphical fidelity or performance you'll have with cloud solutions. Europa Universalis 5 is a good case study for this. I can confirm it runs through crossover, albeit with some extra steps I'll talk about in a bit. But the real limiting factor here is the hardware you've got. Say you are trying to play this game on an M2 or M3 Air with 8 gigs of memory you are basically looking at a laggy slideshow even at the lowest graphics. Things looked better on my M3 Max Pro with 36 gigs, but I still couldn't get a decent FPS count at 4K with high settings, so I had to settle for medium graphics and 1080p resolution. Don't get me wrong, this is still a decent option and I do recommend it. You just need to be aware of your max specs relative to the game's hefty requirements. Also, with this method, you can use mods for single player games and there's a 14 day free trial. To use Crossover, click the link in the description, enter your email, and download the app. Then, after you install Crossover, you must click the Try Now option for the 14-day trial. If you need a longer tutorial, visit our video on that. Just note that the experience with Crossover can sometimes vary between updates, so don't be surprised if it suddenly starts to break the game. If this happens, check our site for the detailed instructions, or you'll have to research this on your own. Now. In case you run into any sort of issue while attempting to start Europa Universalis in Crossover, here are some useful tips that may help you resolve it. In your Crossover bottle, make sure to use the D3D Metal setting and also add Dash DX12 to the game's Steam launch options. Next, open the bottle's C drive, go to the EU5 install folder and find the compound settings text file. Open it, delete the file's contents, and save the changes. Do not delete the file itself. After that, Start the game as normal. For smoother performance on Apple Silicon, consider turning off the 3D map in-game. Kegworks, 
or Sikaru Gear as it's currently called, is currently the most popular replacement for whiskey since the latter got discontinued by its developer. Think of it as a DIY version of Crossover. It's free, but it's not as reliable or user-friendly. I personally prefer Crossover, but if you are on a tight budget, you can give Kegworks a go. For this game in particular, Kegworks gets the job done and lets you play it on a Mac, but you should still be prepared for occasional bugs while working with the tool. Performance-wise, it's also similar to Crossover, but with more jank and potential for things breaking down. As for the setup, you first need to install Homebrew, then Kegworks itself, then Steam, and then the actual game. The process takes a bit more time compared to the other methods here, and so is beyond the scope of this video. For detailed guidance on how to set up Kegworks, just click the respective video in the description and it will show you exactly what to do. So this brings us to the conclusion of today's video. Remember, for more detailed explanations of the methods to play this game on Mac, you can always check the video tutorials linked in the description. If you are interested in exploring more popular gaming titles you can play on your Apple machine, you should check the videos that will now appear on your screen or simply browse through our channel. Also, in case you found this content helpful, we'd greatly appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to our channel. Take care and see you in the next one.